was the night before Christmas, and all through the house. Not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The wind whips the sleet through the cold icy air, like bullets outside my dark ghostly lair. Don't be afraid of my decomposition, tonight's review is of my Christmas tradition. Not a movie, but an episode instead. Gather round close with your favorite undead. Me. It's a cold winter's night. I have just taken my sugar ghost cookies out of the oven, and I'm all ready for tonight's review. A tale of greed, murder, and an escaped mental patient in a Santa Claus suit. The episode begins with an introduction from our good friend the Crypt Keeper. There's something unsettling about that Santa mask, and seeing his dead rotten teeth beneath it, it's awesome. He segues us into the story, and we start off with these beautiful shots of snow falling softly in the night. Paired with Nat King Cole's iconic rendition of chestnuts roasting on an open fire, this sets up the mood perfectly. Robert Zemeckis, who you might know from the few small films he's done, takes the director's seat. And this was written by Fred Decker, who's also known for House, Night of the Creeps, and The Monster Squad. We circle around as a woman grabs a fire poker. Yes. Well, let me have it. The asshole husband uses a very poor choice of words, and she buries that poker right in his head. Damn. That's how you kick off an episode. Let's hit the ground running. Merry Christmas, you son of a bitch. Hey, wait, is that Marshall Bell? It is. Coach Snyder himself. He just plays an asshole so damn well. Little Carrie Ann comes downstairs and nearly busts Mommy, who just did something very naughty. She just killed him and is already almost getting caught. Nah, don't take it personal, little one. The Christmas season is killer. He's dead asleep. She tucks her into bed and cracks her window open for a breeze. Then she goes downstairs to call her lover and leaves a very incriminating voicemail. She basically tells him the deed is done and that they're rich now. Super smart move. I mean, she even mentions that he specifically told her not to call. It's Elizabeth. I know you told me not to call, but I just had to tell you. It's done. I did it. It's all ours. The money, everything. We're free. Merry Christmas, darling. She drags her husband's body out the front door with perfect timing. She just misses an all-points bulletin, warning of an escaped mental patient who's axing down people in their homes. Some may say it's convenient that she missed this, but... For me, I'd say it's good old karma at work. The broadcaster says that he's loose in the Gaines County area in reference to William Gaines, the publisher of the Crypt Comics in the 50s. This story actually was first seen in a 1954 issue of The Vault of Horror, which was the sister publication to Tales from the Crypt. For some reason, her plan was to dispose of the corpse in the well outside their house. Yeah, no one will ever think to look there. The cold snow brings Joseph to life and he chokes her out. He isn't ready to die just yet. Okay, now he's ready. The woman hears something and looks off into the surrounding wood. Boom! Our friend Saint Nick is here to slay her. Oh dear, he missed. The Psycho Santa is played by the brilliant Larry Drake, who three years later would go on to play another escaped mental patient, Dr. Giggles. The woman snaps off an icicle and slices his face open. Ouch. 
Yeah, no one can play this part like Larry. He's he's just great. She runs in and just makes it, but he gets his arm in. You know, this is reminding me a lot of the 2018 Halloween film when Myers is busting into Lori's house. Huh. I wonder if they took inspiration from this episode. She chops at his hand with the axe. It's uh, no shotgun, but it does the job just fine. She rushes to the phone to call the police, then remembers, wait, I killed my husband. This is probably a bad idea. So, she hangs up in a hurry. I know I mentioned this already, but damn, the cinematography sets this Christmas mood perfectly. Santa busts in and struggles to pull her outside. She gets a knockout shot in this time with a blunt end of the axe. Meanwhile, the phone has been ringing off the hook. Who could it be? Is it the cops? Hello? Yep, it's the boys in blue. They tell her that an officer will be dropping by to check on things. They're doing this for all the locals in search of the maniac. After taking a second to catch her breath, she comes up with a plan. She's going to pin her husband's death on St. Nick. Honestly, this is the smartest idea she's had so far. I didn't kill him. Santa did it. Didn't you, Santa? So, outside we go, again. This time, to hit him with the axe. After a few misses, she domes his ass. The front door slams and this wakes up little Carrie Ann who goes to check out her window. She sees that our jolly old soul is gone. The woman makes her way back into the house, but not before getting hit with some snow. Once inside, she calls the cops and puts on an act. Operator. The killer! The killer is here! Please, get me the police! I, I, I knocked him out! Man, this woman is cold as ice. She sees that Santa is back on the loose. Not good considering that she left the axe buried in her husband's skull. She tells the cops where she is because now she is in danger. You can really see the holy shit look in her eyes. She then remembers that Joseph has a gun. A gun that is just straight up in the open, sitting on a shelf genius, especially with the child in the home. The door shuts her in. I'm telling you, karma is kicking her ass. Look at Larry Drake's nasty psycho snarl. I love it. If I had a heart, it would be warmed right now. What an awesome shot. He's climbing a ladder to get into little Carrie's window and she is real happy to see that Santa Claus showed up. He reaches out, but it's just a little too high. The woman busts out of the closet and rushes toward Carrie's room, but she's gone. Uh-oh. Then she hears her daughter call out from downstairs. Since he couldn't reach the window, Carrie let him in through the front door, and she is so proud of it too just smiling away. Also, take a look at the clock. Now, let's backtrack for a moment. When she got the phone call earlier from the cop, it was 8.10, and he said that it would take about 20 minutes for the officer to get there. Well, looky looky, it's 8.30 now. If little Carrie Ann would have just waited a few more minutes to open that door, the cops would have arrived and her mom would be saved. That is an eerie idea. Such a badass design for this Santa too. I love it. No! 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 Or nice. no! No! The Crypt Keeper tells us that Carrie was spared, being that the killer Santa liked his victims older and naughty, I presume. To be honest, little Carrie received the greatest gift of all from old Santa this year. He got her away from those two toxic asshole parents. So there you have it. Wait. 
George P. Wilbur did the stunts? Straight off of Halloween 4? That's sick. And All Through the House is my favorite crypt episode. I have to watch it every year. It's mandatory. The episode hits the gas and just never lets up. The acting, directing, writing, and cinematography are great. The plot is incredible. Simple and to the point. You know. Thank you all for joining me to share my Christmas tradition. Happy Holidays, and I will see you all next year.